Hi friends, uh, today I discuss an important techno savvy upcoming change in the financial system that is central bank digital currency. Recently in a webinar, uh, Deputy Governor of Reserve Bank of India, Ravi Shankar has issued a statement on this central bank digital currency and he also saying like Reserve Bank of India is considering the issuance and phased implementation of the central bank digital currency very seriously. So what is this central bank digital currency? How it is different from the existing digital transactions? and how it is going to help and what are the challenges that are involved in that I am going to discuss uh, in this today's lecture. See before I enter into what is this digital currency and how exactly it is different from the existing currency but just I want to give some few facts about this developments of central bank digital currency. There was a survey conducted by the Bank of International Settlement in the year 2021. The survey report was published in recent RBI report. It was quoted in RBI's report. And according to that report, 86% of the central banks are surveying actively on this research of central bank digital currency. And 60% were experimenting with the technology and 14% of the central banks uh, were already deploying a pilot project and we need to do multiple pilot projects before we introduce in the economy so that means overall world economies are actually considering uh, the central bank digital currency see now when it comes to india in india our cash to gdp is very high and after demonetization, the digital transactions in India are increasing and it is a most welcoming step. But still, to some extent, we are aspiring for we need to reduce the cash in the economy. But if you increase the digital transaction, does it reduce the cash supply in the economy? That is a question mark. I'll explain what exactly how this digital transaction is correlated with the cash and how this digital currency is altogether different from that uh, uh, currency in the economy. Now first I'll come to this currency. See what is this currency? Prior to the currency what was the system? See from the ancient times initially if at all we want to exchange some of the items because one person uh, cannot produce the goods which are necessary for his uh, fulfillment of needs. Definitely he need to depend on some other person. And earlier we used to exchange in a barter system. That means suppose if I give a one thing to you and you have to give another thing to me. But does it equally matches the value? At that point of time, there is no clear idea. But if we think that, suppose if I am giving one pen to you and if you are supposed to give pencils, I may ask for two to three pencils instead of one pencil. Because the efforts involved in the production of the pen uh, is very high compared to the pencil. But there is no specific monetary value that has added to that. But later we have started using the coins like gold coin, silver coin and other. This has a medium of exchange and when you use this gold or silver as a medium of exchange that coin itself is having an intrinsic value to that. Suppose I have paid a one gold coin to you and in return I have purchased a book from you that means suppose if your book cost is something uh, 10 rupees then I will give an equivalent amount of gold coin to you. Suppose if I need to purchase 10 books, then I have to give 10 gold coins. Suppose if I have to purchase another valuable product, then I have to give a much more bigger or much more weighted gold coin to you. That means the medium of exchange has an intrinsic value to that. 
but later we have moved to the currency either it is a paper currency or a coin but this coin and paper currency don't have a specific intrinsic value to that but we will assign any value to that and this assigning done by the sovereign that means the government and suppose now you hold a 100 rupees or 500 rupees that means that this 200 rupees worth of value is assigned to that particular note by the government or by the reserve bank of india or by the sovereign so that means now the present day currencies have an intrinsic value but that is not with that paper currency but it is assigned to that paper currencies by the sovereign now we are using that uh, currency system now we are using that currency for whatever the purpose suppose if i want to join in a coaching center and if they are offering me services worth of let it be 1 lakh rupees then i'll give an equivalent amount of currency notes to the institute that means that 1 lakh rupees worth of value was assigned to that paper notes whatever i'm holding now i'm going to give that uh, currency notes to the institute and in return i'll get the services this is how our normal paper currency works now there was a system called transactions now today I am not physically bringing these notes to the institute but I am just transferring through my account or I am paying uh, through Paytm or whatever the some other wallets now available. That doesn't mean that I am not using the currency here. Still I am using the currency. But I am not physically bringing that currency to the institute for payment or for the shop. But I am only doing a transaction electronically. But for every transaction, there is an underlying currency. Suppose if I am holding a 1 lakh rupees in my bank account and the Amrita IAS Academy is holding uh, an, uh, an account in a particular bank, the moment when I paid a transaction from my account to the Amrita IAS Academy account, there is an underlying physical transaction of the currency from my bank to the uh, Amrita Civil Services Academy's bank. So though it looks like a digital transaction but there is an underlying physical transaction of money happens in every transaction. That is what we call it as a settlement of payment or settlement of transaction. The moment you done the transaction it may not settle automatically it will take it will go to the back end process and there the physical transaction happen from one bank to the another bank. And the physically lifting the currency may take some time but the transaction is approved under RBI, NPCA system. That means whatever the transaction now you are using, still it is it involves the cash. Now I will come to the digital currency. Once you understand a concept of currency, now digital currency means it is issued by the sovereign that means reserve bank of india is going to issue it has its own intrinsic value that means sovereign is going to assign an intrinsic value to that and it is not issuing in a paper form but it is issuing in a digital form that means it has its own code so it is not something like a transaction now you are doing but it is just a currency which is having its own intrinsic value and which was assigned by the sovereign and the one who holds it the one who holds it for them the sovereign is liable to pay that means now if you are physically holding a 2000 rupees in that uh, there will be a writing like i'll promise to the bearer of this note to pay some of 2000 rupees that means the sovereign is liable to pay 2000 rupees of uh, worth of whatever the assets to you if you hold that likewise even if you hold the digital currency also the sovereign is liable to you that means it is just a replacement to the physical currency simply so it has its own identity, it will be issued by the sovereign and it has its own intrinsic value. Then the point is, why it has necessitated for the Reserve Bank of India or to that extent other countries to getting into this digital currency system. And this digital currency system is required, digital currency system is required because 
the digital transactions are increasing that means digital transactions are increasing means the people don't want to hold the physical currency when people don't want to hold the physical currency why you need to print so much of physical currency i am not saying like people are completely abandoned with the physical currency but to some extent most of the people in metropolitan areas or in some cities uh, they do not want to hold the cash because they are doing most of the transactions at the different retail and wholesale level so they do, they do not want to hold the physical cash and anyhow they are not interested in physical cash then why you need to print a physical cash because physical cash involves lot of cost because you need to print it you need to transport it you need to store it if it get damaged and again you need to reprint it again you need to maintain the chest security so these are all problems if it is a digital currency then you no need to face that much of problems it is simply a digital thing and the second point why you need this digital currency is there are lot of other private digital currencies are growing like cryptocurrencies a blockchain based a distributed ledger mechanism uh, called the cryptocurrencies and these cryptocurrencies are nowadays gaining lot of prominence and that too these digital currencies are not issued by the sovereign they are not regulated by the sovereign and they may be misused and there may be a high volatility in that and governments want to discourage the digital currency and that is the reason why they want to bring their own digital currency and what the techno what is the technology they are going to use that's a debatable and that is under serious consideration they will decide it i'll come to the technology later but when people are interested in digital transaction that means they don't want to hold the physical currency and when other private people are bringing a digital currency why can't a sovereign so i think in the year 2019 uh, the government has appointed a committee on this cryptocurrencies and uh, the then finance secretary has uh, given a recommendation that government should start its own digital currency maybe based on the recommendation of that committee maybe they are seriously considering now but these are the two necessary things uh, these are the two things that has necessitated for the government to seriously think on this and this digital currency is different from that of the private currency because it is a legalized currency whereas private is not legalized and in this digital uh, central bank digital currency sovereign is going to assign an intrinsic value to that but whereas in case of private uh, no one is going to assign any value to that the values are completely depends on the demand and supply of those currencies that is why there is a high volatility in that if something is goes wrong with the private currency no one will come to your rescue but whereas in case of the uh, central bank digital currency sovereign is regulating it and how you will give it if you take, if you take the case of private currencies there is some distributed ledger mechanism through blockchain technology but here we don't know what technology they are going to use because you need to handle some multiple transaction millions and millions of transaction in a particular second or minute that is why we are seriously thinking on what type of platform we need to use that we need to use for creation of that but when it comes to this digital currency definitely it is going to be a game changer in our financial system i'll come to some of the advantages so that you can understand see there is a transparency and traceability of the currency so what the currencies that you have issued and where are they now because it is a digital currency and who holding it that you can uh, really you you came to know and it is not something like again it's a debatable thing whether we should hold in our bank account or there should be a special wallet to hold these digital currencies and suppose if you are holding it in a wallet does it wallet is with the reserve bank of india or is it with the banking system but anyhow wherever you have there is a back end system that always tracks this and there is a transparency and suppose if at all i want to give some sort of Uh, subsidy or some sort of uh, whatever the financial benefit to some people i can give in terms of digital currency so that i can trace where exactly they are using 
are they using for intended purpose and where is this currency are now are they in black or are they in white are they paying taxes on that so these things can be traceable next when it comes to the domestic settlements suppose now you are doing transaction on rtgs and on this whatever the rtgs transaction you are doing or are you trans are you are doing transaction on digital uh, wallets it will take some time and sometimes the transaction settlement may lead to error or it may get delayed or it may be failed because it requires a back end transaction that the involves the physical transaction of the currency but whereas if you just transfer with this digital currency it is it itself is a currency that doesn't require any physical exchange so definitely it will lead to a faster transaction and efficient transaction and the transaction involves less cost next when it comes to the international settlement suppose if there is a digital Uh, currency that is the digital dollar currency and a digital india currency and suppose if i export or if i import something then transaction has to happen between the rupee digital rupee and digital dollar suppose in present day it required a physical transaction and because of the time zone difference suppose if the transaction is get delayed the dollar value changes and it may be a burden to either of the parties but whereas if it is transacted in digital currency that mean if the both the parties are agree to the transaction then immediately it can transfer and that reduces this time zone different problem and the another advantage is i told you like the cost involved in the digital currency is very less so the senior age uh, that is getting to the reserve bank of india or government is very high the senior age in the sense the entrance the, the cost involved in the production of the currency the difference between the cost involved in the production of currency to the intrinsic value assigned to that suppose i'll take 100 rupee note and its intrinsic value is 100 but the cost involved in the production of that currency just assume it is a 5 rupees the senior age is 95 but whereas in case of the differ, in case of digital currency the cost involved may be just 1 rupee or 2 rupee so that the senior age increased from 95 to 98 this is something like a profit or it will be used by the government so a faster transaction lead to digital economy so these are all the advantages and even the settlement risk also come down and even for the regular transaction you need to adjust the liquidity and here the liquidity it will reduce the liquidity needs for settlement of daily transactions because you no know, need to uh, send the liquidity from one bank to another bank so these are the advantages of this digital currency now i'll come to some of the challenges of the digital currency uh, because it's a very techno savvy and highly innovative idea and it involves lot of technicalities and complex things are there but i'll try to simplify and i'll place some of the challenges before you now in case of challenges suppose if this digital currencies are issued does it place along with my account in my bank or should i place a separate wallet for it for it suppose if i use a special wallet for it then the deposits of the banks will come down and if the deposits of the banks come down that will affect the interest rate policy of the bank and also it affect the credit disbursement of the banking system this is a one challenge and some people are saying like okay whatever the unused digital currencies will automatically transfer to the banking system so it may not be a big problem some people are advocating but still it is a problem when it comes to the deposits of the bank next when it comes to the liquidity problem that means if suppose uh, suddenly something happened to the bank or suddenly the interest rates are decreased then the easy withdrawal the easy withdrawal of currency happened in case of digital currency i no need to physically go to the bank to derive bank to withdraw that i can simply withdraw the money in a faster manner and suppose if that entire withdrawal happens in one go then it will be very difficult for the banking system to cater the needs of the economy so the reserve bank of india has to pump more and more money into the banking system and if reserve bank of india pump more and more amount of liquidity into the banking it may create more amount of money in the economy 
and how this liquidity will be adjusted it's a, a difficult thing next one another point when it comes to the monetary policy of the reserve bank of india see now the present day monetary policy is involves in the currency circulation and the interest rates of the reserve bank of india but if tomorrow some amount of currency in the economy is in digital form and they can be withdrawn at any point of time and we don't know exactly who is accepting and who is not accepting because the acceptability of the digital currency is also a question mark then it will be initially a big problem for the reserve bank of india to regulate the currency in accordance with the inflation in the economy this is another important problem next another uh, problem is a digital currency can be converted into cash and cash can also be converted into a digital currency because both are issued by the sovereign it has to be there but when this type of things are happening then you must have an additional amount of liquidity with you because if tomorrow most of the people because of one or other reason suppose if there is a cyber security or cyber threat happen to your digital currency and most of the people will try to convert their digital currency into this normal currency then you must have an adequate amount of uh, physical currency with you and again this may create lot of currency in the system so this is also one of the challenges and one more problem is the anonymity is very very important see in advantages i have given an example like you can trace it there is a transparency but generally people when they are using the physical cash they don't want to be identified by any organization and if someone knows that your currency is traceable then they may not show interest in using that and again the acceptability of this digital currency is also a question mark because some people may use it uh, but when it comes to the rural areas it will take lot of time because it involves lot of financial literacy and also the digitization infrastructure network in the country so the anonymity and acceptability is also a one of the important problem in this and apart from that the technological thing what technology you are using to use you are going to use whether it is a digital tech whether it is a blockchain technology or any other technology and again the cyber security attacks that are associated with the technology i think need to be taken care second one is the validating mechanism and who is going to validate it and the distribution architecture that means does it be completely uh, controlled by the central bank or they will give it to the banks or it is under or is it controlled by the reserve bank is under the reserve bank of india or it is given to the banking system we don't know so these are some studies that are going on and again you need to do an amendments to the legal framework because the present legislations are only for only meant for the the physical currencies the rbi act the coinage act the fema act and also now we are bringing the information technology uh, to the financial system and currency system you need to amend the it act also so these type of legislative changes are also necessary so along with all the other central banks the government of india and reserve bank of india is also seriously studying the impact and uh, the other aspects of this digital currency and we wanted to implement in a phased manner not a one go and again the question here is whether we are going to issue an upcoming new currency in digital currency or otherwise we wanted to replace the some of the physical currency into digital currency we don't know that is one more thing uh, that is consider under consideration second one is when we are implementing we don't know how the people will move whether they will completely not completely but most of the people may suddenly move to the digital currency because of its features other or otherwise they may completely abandon the digital currency and they may completely go to the physical currency and such volatile things will create a problem in the financial system because you have created a money but no one want to use that money that leads to excess currency in the system so these type of initial hiccups are there but reserve bank of india is seriously studying but if we really implemented in a perfect manner without any loopholes and without creating any volatility definitely it will become a game changer and it will improve the financial inclusion 
in the country and also it will modernize the banking sector in our economy and also it may lead to a less cash in the economy because if the economy become less cash then definitely it will be very helpful because you will formalize in the transaction then it will be easy for us to collect the transaction to collect the taxes and also it will be easy for us to design the policies at the reserve bank of india level or macro level in order to uh, make the fundamentals of economy are so stable so i hope you understand this topic and when we don't know exactly when reserve bank of india is going to issue but it is a very very important topic uh, try to have an idea on this central bank digital currency thank you